Okay, the taste test. Darling. Coming up in this week's episode. <laughs> the first bite, I would say, is exceptional. <laughs> Limestone Coast, we love it. Oh, Mount Gambia in particular is just awesome and definitely somewhere I think you want to come for at least a week or a couple of weeks if you've got that up your sleeve because there's so much to do in Mount Gambia itself and then also in the surrounding regions. All right, first up is always the Vic, the Visitor Information Centre. Awesome team, friendly staff there, ready to show you where to go, what to do, where to stay, where to play. Mm. Very cool. First for us is these. I have these one page of maps Ooh. and depending on what you love there you go there's a water activity guide there's a family guide pet guide what's this one walking trail guide hang on wait for it never seen this before oh, op shop, shop guide. guide how good is that and amenities guide that's awesome laundromats and everything that you need to know before you go mm. and it is super cool. There is an interactive discovery center inside there as well, which is great for the kiddos. Yep. There's a walkthrough tunnel cave with uh, real life fossils. Mm. Uh, there's a volcano that can be activated, which scared the <laughs> out of Jasper. He wasn't quite ready for that. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, and then there's also the Lady Nelson tour ship, which is one of the most significant ships that was in Australia's waters. So some great maritime history as well. Yeah, look, they do it really well at this Vic and mm. there's plenty of parking. We pulled straight in with the van in tow. They've got some long bays there as well. You can also fill up your water tanks, which is very handy. It is. We love to travel with as minimal weight as possible and obviously with three tanks you know there's another 240 kilo like that yeah. uh, so we always travel with our drinking tank which is an 80 litre tank and then the other two we try and leave empty getting to places like this you're only 10 or 15 minutes then to your campground or your, your caravan park mm -hmm. you can fill up with potable water we love it now you do require a tap tool which if you go into the Vic, they will give you one. They'll loan you one, that is. You have to give it back. Yeah. <laughs> There's even room, if you, if you get there and you're like, well, where did you park, mate? You can actually hug the bend there and vehicles can still get mm. around you safely. So we, we can tell you that information. That's uh, definitely doable. Yeah, absolutely. And so great. And then it was only, gosh, 15 minutes down the road for us to this awesome hip camp that we are staying at. It is called Pine Ridge and it's this really great, well, the owners say, oh, it's just our back paddock, but it's a really great back paddock. And they've got eight sites laid out that are huge. I mean, this is the biggest camping area for a hip camp that we have ever stayed. And look, you are in a paddock and there's great hay bales dividing the sites. They're all coloured sites as well. Mm -hmm. So when you go onto their hip camp listing to book, you'll pick green, blue, purple, orange, whatever campsite. We're staying in green, uh, not for any other reason other than it's our favourite colour, Jasper and I. <laughs> but um, all the sites are fantastic and so much space and really quiet. And then just the outlook of the farm, the most beautiful cows that are just in the paddocks surrounding this particular one that you camp in. It's a great spot and so close to town. Fantastic. Mm. Uh, now, the cows love the smell of your barbecue. Oh my gosh. And we haven't seen this before, but as soon as I opened the lid, you know, looking ain't cooking on a Weber, but it was at the end of it and I was about to serve up. They all came right over to the fence and they were just heads in the air. Like what's going on there? Yep. Jasper, look at this. <laughs> can you see that? All the cows can smell the dinner. And do you know what they're happy about? What? That we're having fish. And we're not having burgers. Why? I'm being happy about that. Let's just say we're not having steaks. We're having oh, fish. Oh yeah! Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I've never seen that before. I mean, we've done jazz for cows, 
and played jazz and they've all come over because we saw that on YouTube. We thought, well, we'll see if this works and it did. But there you go. Look, all of them, they got all their, <laughs> their noses high in the air. They're like, oh, how good does that smell? I let them know we weren't cooking steaks, so they were yeah. okay with that. <laughs> yeah, they were happy. <laughs> but no, it is a great base to really get out and explore. Mm. The limestone roads here mm. in the afternoon when the sun's hitting them are this brilliant white. Just some beautiful footage too. Oh, it's so beautiful. And of course, the wildlife is abundant. We have seen huge mobs of kangaroos mm. um, across the property. And as we've been driving through, I guess these back parts of town, it's real lush farmland as well. So it's nice to get out and have a bit of a drive around. Mm. Okay, let's talk about a couple of the other highlights. There's plenty, but in particular is the Umferston if I've said that right. I think so. Sinkhole, well worth a visit. And it's even, I think, would be a great place to take a picnic and mm. sit in the surrounding gardens. Take your time walking down through this really unique natural asset that they have literally in the middle of town. It is literally in the middle of town. I was so surprised when we, you know, first visited because you expect it to be in this secret garden somewhere because that's what it feels like. And it's right there off the main road. There are, of course, all of the amenities, bathrooms and whatnot there. There's kids swings as well. So you could go for quite a few hours. Yeah. It really is so beautiful. And it's just one example of the many sinkholes that mm -hmm. are in this region. What was that statistic? that we got told about the sinkholes? Look, within 15 or 20 kilometers actually of, of town, 95% of Australia's sinkholes are in that radius, so. It's crazy. And then there's a, a few over on the Nullarbor in WA. So this really is the epicenter of sinkhole and diving yes. and adventure and, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. So Umferston is beautiful. Take your camera if you're a keen photographer because yeah. um, the gardens are gorgeous. And depending on what time of year you're there, obviously the, the flowers are in bloom. Look, I think you could safely spend an hour and that would be enough. But like you say, a couple of hours and a lunch, perfect. Mm. There is a souvenir and kiosk there that's open during um, most days of the weeks, but you can check that out. Then the other real highlight, which I'm sure is the... The number one visitor experience in Mount Gambier is the Blue Lake. Look at that. That's not wow. us. No. But just imagine it is us because that's what it looks like at the moment when we're here. <laughs> yeah, I know. You look, look great, though. Thank you. <laughs> I've trimmed up and got dreadies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, there's a, a 3.6 kilometre crater or rim walk, really. Mm. It is around this uh, ancient volcano. It is easy it's a great activity to get out as a family, get all these different perspectives of the Blue Lake. It's uh, beautiful. If you wanted to camp right there, there's a Blue Lake Caravan Park. Yeah, that's a big four, I think. Yeah. And look, we've stayed there before a few years ago when we came through Mount Gambier. And again, that's a great park yep. if you want to stay at the caravan park and have easy access into town. That's and all awesome. the amenities and everything you yep. need. Obviously, you you know, you don't have the joy of having all of this space and mm, peace you, can, and quiet. you can let your kids be Run loud, use, use their outside <laughs> voices and yeah, exactly. not be a problem. Uh, but it is a great park. Mm, but Blue yeah. Lake is spectacular. You can drive the whole way around it mm -hmm. as well. And if you are coming across the summer period, that's when it turns this incredible, vibrant wow. turquoise colour. And then across the cooler months of the year, it still beautiful and blue but it's just a a darker blue so fascinating yeah mm. not photoshop that's what it looks yeah. like yeah that's amazing. exactly what it looks like okay the other highlight really we've been to this location before is killsby sinkhole mm. it's probably or well, at most 12 13 minutes drive from our campsite here at mm -hmm. pine ridge over there to meet graham and joe the owner operators for this very unique private property tourism product yep. that is we put it up as really in your top three bucket list experiences that you could do while mm. you're in South Australia. Yep, definitely. It's in that list. It is that impressive. The clarity of the water, the experience uh, as a whole. They're now distilling their own gin. <laughs> They've got some accommodation opening uh, in early 2024, so mm -hmm. in the next little while. Uh, so keep your eye on that on their website. Killsby Sinkhole, truly a remarkable experience. Now, something really cool that we'd never, ever heard of while we were out with Joe and Graham at Killsby Sinkhole is this little native berry called a muntry. Yes, it's affectionately known as an emu apple. 
It's a native bush tucker food that grows in the sand dunes, apparently only in this very southern area of South mm. Australia and into parts of Victoria as well. And it's very unknown yeah. to most people. I think the Indigenous people have obviously been uh, enjoying these for many, many years. You can dry them out, uh, you can freeze them, and they're delicious, aren't they? They are so unique. Now we're going to try... I don't know what we're going to do. A Muntry's muffin. A Muntry muffin, <laughs> righto. Or a damper or something. We'll try that. You can make this ingredient on really go, add Jasper. to a savoury dish oh. or a sweet dish. So we Could might even try things. a dark chocolate and muntry muffin. Oh, yum. Well, Joe Sounds told good. me that these little guys pack, I think, four times the antioxidants than blueberries do. So they are considered a superfood. Superfood. Yes. Love it. Exactly. I do have to say, though, we were picking them off the bushes with Joe and Graham in... I guess the height of the day over lunchtime and it was quite warm and we were tasting them. I reckon they had a little bit of a fermentation process <laughs> in the warmth of the sun because then we tried to do a piece to camera and I just got the giggles and couldn't get my words out. So I'm going to look into that to see whether they have any sort of effect on you if they've been heated up. <laughs> look, I don't know. I ate the same amount. I was fine. I'll share a little bit of that footage now. There you go. <laughs> okay, we've set up the van at a grape, a grape very first place you should visit <laughs> and you want to check out the tall ship shit <laughs> now let's be honest mount gampier <laughs> <laughs> hashtag we've done fifty thousand takes <laughs> oh, just get it right Katie. okay here we go here we yeah. go there is an enthusiastic group of <laughs> <laughs> what I love about Mount Gambia is it is just <laughs> <laughs> no, no. so much fun. Okay, now the muntry is actually one of the primary ingredients in oh, the yes. Killsby Sinkhole Gin. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can actually taste this subtle hint of it when you're having their gin. So yeah. we can recommend their gin as well. Very yes, good. yeah, and distilled using the water from the sinkhole because it is so pure. <laughs> Amazing. All right. We're about to pack up. Yes, we are. Because we are heading down to the famous coast. It is known as the Southern Ocean Drive. Mm. So much to see, so much more to explore. And let us know how you go with those muffins. If you can get your hands on some muntries anyway. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is going to be yummy or not. Give it a go. Give it a go. It's a different flavour. I wait for you, your, your choice. Oh, I like that. Oh, mm. okay. Who doesn't love baking day especially when you're trying out a new recipe which is exactly what we're doing today we're giving muffins a go cooking them on our Weber so it's a first for us but I'm sure they're going to turn out beautifully and we've got a secret ingredient so first of all we've just whipped up a basic muffin mix and then Jasper can you remember what's the name of the secret ingredient that we are going to be using In Apples. Emu apples. Now, if you haven't heard of these guys, don't worry because neither had we until just a minute ago when we were down filming in Mount Gambia and we were out with Joe and Graham at Killsby Sinkhole, which is just an incredible place to visit. Add that to your list. And they introduced us to muntries. Now, muntries are like native cranberries and they grow here in the cooler southern parts of South Australia and even into some of the parts of Victoria across the border referred to as emu apples by the indigenous people who've apparently been enjoying these delicious little morsels for many many years 
they pack a punch too. They are a superfood. Their antioxidant level is apparently much higher than a blueberry, which is amazing. And they've got this really unique flavor. They are a little bit of a mix of a green apple with a hint of juniper in them as well. But how awesome is that? We'd never seen them before. We picked them off the bushes. I popped them in the freezer just to keep them until we knew what to do with them. And now here we are, we're gonna add them into our muffins. And what else are we adding into our muffins, Jasper? That was your ingredient of choice. Ah, oh, the white chocolate chips, of course. Well, of course, so we're going to add some of the white chocolate chips to round out the flavor of the muntries. So into our basic muffin mix, what do you want to add first, the muntries or the white chocolate chips? White chocolate chips. Righto. So you give me that spoon, you tip those in. Wow. Oh, there's still more. Come on. Beautiful. Here, you can stir those in just for you. And then we'll pop in, now look, I'm not going by any recipe for these secret ingredients. So we're just going to add in what we think is a good amount for our muffins. Look at them, they're such a beautiful color as well. Yeah, they are. Okay, so Paul has prepared our Weber. It's been preheating on a high heat for 10 minutes. And then to cook, we'll drop it down to a, a lower heat around the 180 degree mark. And apparently, these guys will only take about 20 minutes, but we might check them after 15 just to be sure that we're not burning them because unfortunately we do have a habit of burning the bottom of the cakes that we cook in the Weber. So fingers crossed our muffins will come out unscathed. I'm sure Yay! they're going to be delicious. So the next step is to pop them into our muffin tray. So you've done a great job stirring, young man. Let's set that aside over there. We'll put this in here. Now, what are these guys called, Jasper? Well, they are called colourful patty pans, but I wanted to call them muffin cups. Muffin cups. Okay. If anybody knows the origins of where the patty pan came from in terms of the name, we'd love to know. Do you want to use different colours or all the same? Uh, different colours. Can right. I can I do my green? You sure can. So Thank let's you. go those for you. I'll just put these to the side. Great. We'll get some in. Maybe we should do a rainbow sort of pattern. Ooh. So then yellow there. Oh, where? Just and put them else? there and then maybe put something okay. to pick and yep. we can just sort of mash it up. Perfect. Great job, Jasper. Okay, now we've got our little spoons because I think that's going to be easier for us. Now, I'm going to hold it over here. Which one are you going for? This. This one. Good question. Yeah, oh. this green one. Yeah. There goes the munchies. Yeah. Bye so bye. Do your best to not get it outside of your patty pan. I sort of spilled like that's all right. A bit. tiny little bit's fine. How good is this? We absolutely love utilizing this awesome space. It is the outdoor kitchen on our zone. And boy, it's changed the way that we live our lifestyle. Prior to having this amount of space outside in our previous van, we would do 99% of our cooking, our prepping inside. Well, now having this extra bench space, it's so good because it means we can get outside, I can get Jasper involved, it doesn't matter if we make a huge mess because it's easy to clean up. We're outside, so we're already winning. I'm not dealing with all of that inside of the van. And, you know, on a beautiful day like today, we can also be involved in what's going on out here or if Paulie's set up and he's editing, or if we've got the TV out here set up as well, you're really part of the action. And this is just such a great functional space, whether you're utilising it for cooking as the outdoor kitchen. I mean, what's great is that it's got the six different compartments, so you can really set it up to suit the way that you travel, the way that you like to camp as well with what you've got there. Something that we regularly do is on our travel days. We absolutely love it. There's nothing better than being able to pull over at a roadside stop or you know some random spot in the middle of nowhere and be able to whip the outdoor kitchen out, bring the electric awning out, and we really only bring it out a meter or so just to give us enough shade. Quickly 
get the induction out, whip up a cup of tea, make Jasper a wrap or a snack. It is so quick, it is so easy, and we absolutely love that we can do that without needing to go inside the van for anything at all. So that is excellent. The other thing that we found that we have been using this space so much more for while we've been traveling through South Australia is to cook our seafood. We're not doing that inside the van because of course, when you know when you're cooking seafood, you're cooking meat, it can have a smell that lingers inside the van. So to be able to whip out the induction, set it up out here, cook up our fish, sit out under the awning, enjoy these beautiful summer evenings that we've had down here in South Australia. It's just been so brilliant. And of course, you've got all of your, your power outlets, your USB charge points, you've got your TV connector. So we've got that set up tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna sit down and watch some of the cricket when we enjoy our dinner and then a little bit of dessert, which is our Muntree muffins. It's just a fantastic feature we absolutely love on the Zion. All right, I reckon that Weber is ready to go, Paulie. What do you think? To get these muffins on? Let's do it. Okay. I've got that alarm set, I reckon you're on the How's my timing? <laughs> I can smell it. Okay, here we go. Let's get them on. On they go, Jasper. Good luck, little fellas. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, look at that, perfect. Okay, the taste test. Darling. Hang on. Okay. I just gotta pull off some of the paper, but that first bite. I would say is exceptional. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It that first bite was good. Mmm, that's pretty good. Mum did all right. Yeah. How about the munchies? Yeah. <laughs> Not convinced. No, it's really good. Oh, you guys have got some extra white chocolate there. You lucky bugger. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly magazine articles and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails. I just hit that rock. You okay? Yeah. Oh, they're jutting out. Oh, mate. I'll live. These steps were not made to code, were they? No, they were not. <laughs> and Graham's dad dug them out with a jackhammer.